The news, of course, starts at this hour in West Africa, where we understand that Liberians have started voting on whether to give football legend George Ware a second term as president. Would peace among voters remain uh, the main concern in a nation still scarred by back-to-back -back civil wars? But the recent killings of three people in clashes between their supporters has filled fears of a return of violence. Now, trouble also marred the close of Weir's re-election campaign Sunday, with his supporters and opposition members throwing stones at each other and police intervening with tear gas. Between 1989 and 2003, the conflict in Liberia left more than 250,000 people dead. Incumbent Weir, who won the 2017 election, faces 17 presidential candidates and is likely a second round runoff in early November. And of course, uh, now joining me on the news to uh, take a look at the early mood and happenings in Liberia is Professor Adam Kane, international human rights advocate from Monrovia, Liberia, and Banika Elliott, President Federation of Liberia Youth. Thank you so much for your time. All right, uh, let me start off with you, Banika. Uh, how are the electorates uh, taking this particular election? Are they eager to participate? How would you describe voter turnout? Hi, um, thank you very much for having me on this platform. And we are really honored to be joined um, by you on this platform. So um, you will not believe that um, I had difficulties in having sleep last night and i think that is because even being as a person as a citizen before being a president um there is this um eagerness to make um decision i think at this time is a very crucial time where we decide as young people as citizens of liberia first and as young people what kind of future we want for ourselves so um yes i think um the turnout right now is good and looking at the different centers I have visited this morning, young people have this enthusiasm um, to elect their leaders. They, it, this is something that they are passionate about. Knowing fully well that the population of Liberia right now, the young people are over 70%, and these young people cannot wait to, to elect um, the kind of leaders that will represent their own aspirations and dreams they have as young people. So the tenor is good, and I think, yes, people are eager to vote and to elect their leaders. All right, uh, I, I want to move to you, Professor Kane. Uh, I mean, has uh, there been any hitch? to the commencement of voting in the places you have seen or visited? At the moment, I visited uh, three polling stations. And uh, uh, of course, things are going on very smoothly at the moment. Uh, there was uh, an engagement between two uh, persons uh, at one of the stations, but we were able to curtail that immediately. And they went on. Uh, uh, freely and, and, and voted and got out of the polling stations. Uh, but so far, we have not seen anything beyond that. Uh, so I think things are very smooth at the moment. Everybody's doing well. As, uh, like she said, there's an excitement. Uh, most of the polling station has been uh, influxed by a uh, lot of young people who who are uh, eager and exuberant to go and vote. There are a lot of first-time uh, voters. So I think uh, things are going well at the moment where we are in Liberia. And we want the international community to know that as well. All right. I would still like to stay with you, Professor Kane. You said that there was a bit of uh, engagement uh, at uh, a polling sure. unit that you visited. Would you like to uh, shed more light on what exactly <clears throat> transpired? And uh, in terms of... Uh, um, uh, materials or voting materials being uh, uh, arriving at the voting venue. Uh, were they there on time in terms of materials and also uh, the process itself? How seamless uh, has it been? Well, uh, yes, to start up with the engagement, I think it was just a dispute relative to because where we are is more convenient. Uh, most of the uh, 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 voters are sitting in various chairs. I think one of the young men may have sat in a chair that because 
as long as you move forward, one person got to sit in, and I think he wasn't moving, and the other person got ahead of him, and that just raised a little contention, but it wasn't something very agreed. We were able to resolve that immediately. Uh, relative to materials, as far as I'm concerned, uh, material were in these pooling stations as early when I spoke with you this morning around 6, uh, uh, 6.30 when we came out, uh, people were already mounted and waiting for people to uh, vote. So we have not had any English relative to shortage in materi uh, 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 um, uh, 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 electoral materials. We haven't had that yet. All right. I, I want to go back to you, Bernie Cat. Right now, the country battles a myriad of problems from economic issues to corruption, drug abuse, and of course, uh, quite a number of other pressing issues. Now, what areas should the next president prioritize to restore hope and confidence in the people? So I just um, made a um, mention of the population of young people in Liberia. Banika, are you there? Therefore, becomes the okay. next president. It is based on the mandate of the young people of Liberia. So whoever becomes our next president, <clears throat> it is it is um so who the young people vote for. So I think um. The young people issues, the issues that affect young people in Liberia should be issues that should be key on the agenda of these political leaders, whoever the president shall be. So um, we know that young people are passionate, they are concerned about having quality education. So yeah, there's, there need to be more investment in our areas of education. And also young people are concerned about having health, health um, infrastructure well um, put in place. So um, efforts should be directed towards our health sector too as well and also <clears throat> youth empowerment youth empowerment youth in youth development in total this this is something that i think should be key on the agenda of whoever that going to become the next president of liberia and i think it's very important it's, it's going to empower the young people and prepare them for the future that they desire to have now i, I i'm still staying with you banika now 20 candidates are in the of course, a race for Liberia's top job. Now, each confident that they can turn the country's fortune around if voted into power. But what, you know, uh, is it looking like at the polls right now? Is there any signal as to who is leading? Um, right now, I cannot speak to that. It is hard to detect. So until the NEC can officially announce um, probably based on the preliminary results as to who is in the lead. That is how we're going to know. But as it stands right now, no, um, you cannot say because, I mean, um, the different candidates in the race, especially the two major political parties, I would say three major political parties, that is the CDC, the Unity Party, and the collaborating political parties, they all have huge supporters. And I mean, this is something that you cannot detect, just like people say, I am for this party until these official results are announced. Mm. Now, before I let you go, Professor Kane, quickly before uh, in 30 seconds, uh, how would you describe the confidence of the people in the electoral process today? Well, the youth, the young people, because I have not uh, been privy to see a lot of uh, elderly, I think I've seen the youth uh, show up uh, in their numbers. They are... Uh, showing up with excitement and confidence uh, uh, to vote their leader. However, I will still uh, propose or uh, I will still submit that there is uh, this uh, election anxiety that is clouding Liberia uh, that is categorized by some level of, of fear, of uncertainty because of the proceedings, uh, uh, electoral violence that have occurred over these days. So we are hoping that, uh, we haven't seen anything yet, but we know that things will be fine. And that, that is our, uh, our advocacy at the moment. All right, thank you so much for your time. And of course, uh, deeply appreciate it, Professor Kane and uh, Banika. Thank you so much. Thank you.